Hey guys, welcome back to another Harbour Unbox video. I'm not quite sure how to properly introduce this video because in a way it's a bit pointless, or at least the testing's a bit pointless, and I know that's not a great way to start off, uh, but I found the results interesting and I thought you guys might as well. Basically over the past few weeks in my spare time, something I sadly have very little of at the moment, I've been madly benchmarking CPUs. The primary reason for this is to build up a database of results for when Cabby Lake and Zen finally arrive. Ooh, Zen. Every time I talk about Zen, I get excited. Anyway, when benchmarking Intel's old Sandy Ridge processors, I noticed something strange. They were much slower than expected. Not that long ago, I did a huge amount of testing for a video Matt presented, which looked at how the last five generations of Intel Core i7 processors compared in terms of performance when gaming. With all five processors clocked at 4 GHz, the Sandy Bridge 2600K was for the most part not a great deal slower than the 6700K. At the most extreme, when looking at the minimum frame rate, we found the 2600K to be around 20% slower. This is a reasonably large drop off in performance, though given the age of the Sandy Bridge architecture, we didn't feel this was significant. Moving forward to the here and now, when making a similar comparison between these processors, I found that the 2600K was at times more than 30% slower. That's a pretty big difference compared to what was found around 9 months ago, so I wanted to find out what was going on. Was I doing something wrong, or was there some other factor at play? The key difference between now and then, other than the games being tested, which no doubt contributes to some of the performance hit, I'm now using a significantly more powerful GPU. Previously testing was done with the 980Ti, but now I'm testing with the more updated Titan XP. For those wondering, the reason why we use such a fast GPU, or at least the fastest GPU available at the time of testing, is to remove this component as a performance limiting factor, and this places more emphasis on CPU performance. So, was the combination of newer, more demanding games plus a more powerful GPU the only reason why Sandy Bridge fell further behind? As it turns out, there's another factor to consider, the PCI Express bus. As many of you know, Sandy Bridge processors support PCI Express 2.0, rather than the current 3.0 revision. This means the link between the PCIe x16 slot and the CPU is limited to 8GB per second. On the other hand, Ivy Bridge and newer processors offer 16GB per second as they use the 3.0 revision. In the past, this hasn't really been a big deal, and we found that with previous generation GTX 980 Ti and R9 Fury X flagship GPUs, that it only cost gamers around a frame or two, at most. Although it hadn't been an issue in the past, was the limited PCI Express bandwidth an issue for the Titan XP? Thankfully, there was an easy way to find out with my ASRock Z170 motherboard, which allows me to change the PCIe x16 mode from 3.0 to 2.0 and even 1.0. I decided to test all three revisions with the Titan XP, as well as the GTX 1080 and the GTX 1070 graphics cards. And yes, I know, I know, we are such Nvidia shills, we tested with no AMD cards once again. But as I said previously, the Fury X, we have already know it doesn't benefit from the latest revision, so there isn't much point testing again, and the same is obviously going to be true for the RX 480, which is slower again. And on that note, the GTX 1060, it's not going to benefit, because we know that's around GTX 980 performance, and previously we didn't see much difference with the 980 Ti. Anyway... Circling back, the reason why I said the testing was pointless was because no one is ever going to find themselves running a GTX 1080, let alone a Titan XP, on a platform that doesn't support the latest PCI Express revision. I suppose if they did though, it would look something like that. Titan XP on a Z68 motherboard with a 2600K processor. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. Still, I've gathered all the results uh, for my own investigation to find out what was going on, and I found them interesting, thought you guys might as well, and decided to share them. So, let's check them out. Testing with Gears of War 4, you can see that when using the GTX 1070, there is no difference in performance between the second and third generation PCIe revisions. In fact, there's almost no difference when looking at the very first revision either. The GTX 1080 also provides similar performance trends for the most part. Moving up to the Titan XP, things start to change. Here we see a 5 FPS jump in the minimum frame rate, though this does only equate to a 5% increase, but honestly that's larger than I was expecting. The Deus Ex Mankind Divider results are very interesting. The GTX 1070 only sees a 1 to 2 FPS increase when upgrading from the second gen PCIe revision. That said, we do see a steady 3 FPS increase when coming from the first gen revision. 
Increasing the rendering power with the GTX 1080, we find similar performance margins for the most part. The same is true for the Titan XP results, the margin widens by just a single frame. The last game where I ran our full battery tests was Battlefield 1. Here the Titan XP saw a 4% increase for the minimum frame rate and a 6% increase for the average when moving to the latest third generation revision. That netted us 8 FPS more on average, not a game changer, but it will make a difference for those running 144Hz monitors. Okay, so the gains with the Titan XP weren't earth shattering, but we did see a 3 to 5% performance decline when using the second generation PCI Express revision. This goes some way in explaining the extra 10% Sandy Bridge loses to Skylake in my recent tests. The rest can be put down to the Titan XP being much faster than the GTX 980 Ti, and the fact that we're using more modern demanding, no, more modern games that are more demanding. Yeah, more modern, more demanding games. I'm sure these results didn't blow anyone's socks off, but as I said, I found them interesting and thought you guys might too. There's not much else to say really, you aren't going to run into any real world scenario where a Titan XP is limited to PCIe 2.0 or worse, but now you know how it would perform if it was. On that bombshell, I'm your host Steve, catch you next time.